Hey everybody, what is up? I have great news for you. The Surgency team just released a free DLC. So they not only added a bunch of new stuff like weapons, attachments, grenades, maps, game modes, but they also gave us some tweaks to previous maps and some new aesthetics to some attachments that we had. But first things first, let's start with the new attachments. Alright, let's start with the scopes. First of all, we have the 2 times red dot scope. This is definitely a scope for close to medium range engagements. This not only allows you to have a good peripheral vision, but it just gives you the enough zoom to have that small edge over your adversaries on close to more or less medium range engagements. If you want long range engagements, you can also use the new scope, which is a 3.4 times scope. You combine this scope with the foregrip and the heavy barrel, for example, and you're gonna be a huge pain in the ass for those snipers. Remember, you can change from auto to, to semi-automatic fire. So this basically becomes a semi-automatic sniper rifle. Remember, this is a really hardcore game. One well-placed shot and you kill your adversaries. Regarding sniper rifles, with a new DLC or with a new patch, you can now use or attach the suppressor to your sniper rifle. This wasn't possible previously, so this is definitely a welcoming addition. You can also use the iron sights just like you're seeing now, this was also not possible in the previous version. Now if you want to be a sneaky ninja, equip the new 3.4 times scope and the suppressor and you're gonna be a freaking ghost, especially in those night maps. Trust me, it's awesome. The Sushan team also have the exact same abilities now. You can attach a suppressor to your sniper rifle and you can have the uh, iron sights, like you're seeing here. Or you can have the 2 times. Uh, red scope, just like you have on the other team, the default 7x scope, the cobra sight, like this, and you can also use the 4x scope, the insurgents don't have a 3.4, instead they have a 4x scope, that works for every single weapon, just like this, it's basically the same. To finish up with the attachments, even though we previously had the foregrip, it now looks different, it's a wooden foregrip, it fits much better. Look at this, really cool. If you're curious and you don't remember, the previous four grips looked like this, all right? So I think that this one looks much, much better on these weapons. All right, let's talk grenades. Previously, the smoke, the frag and the flashbang were the only grenades that we could choose from and those grenades were also available, available for every single class. Right now we have four, we have one more. We have the incendiary grenade for the security forces and the Molotov cocktail or the cocktail Molotov for the insurgents. It's basically the same thing with a few differences. First of all, the incendiary grenade bounces off the ground, just like you're gonna see here. When you throw it down, it still bounces. The Molotov on the other hand, which is the equivalent for the incendiary grenade for the insurgents explodes on impact all right now let's go and see both side by side so that you have an idea of how much different they are let's throw one molotov down and now an incendiary grenade down like i said it bounces off a little bit so but you get more or less the idea the one on the left is the incendiary, the one on the right is the Molotov. So I made a few tests regarding the damage of the Molotovs and the incendiary grenade and the area of effect, etc. But I'll leave that for another video because I don't, wanna, I don't want this video to become too big and boring. And now let's talk about the new weapon. This weapon is called the FN Fall. It's exclusive to the Insurgents. And the Sapper, Machine Gunner and Sniper cannot choose this weapon from the menu. Of course they can pick it up from the ground and use it, but just so you know. The main difference is that this weapon was made to compete directly against the AKM. So they're basically the same, they have the same attachments and in terms of statistics I will do an analysis of the weapons later on but just so you know right now let's just compare the recoil pattern. Let's start off with the AKM, no attachments and I'm not gonna counter the recoil. Here you go. Okay, let's try the FN fall in the exact same circumstances. Alright, as you can see, the recoil pattern of the FN fall is considerably tighter and it doesn't kick as much. This is the main difference of the weapon. Like I said, this is not an analysis whatsoever, this is just an overview so that you get a glimpse of what's new. 
You also have two new maps. This one is called Buris and it's uh, in the desert with a river on one of the sides. So it's a really good looking map, but you can clearly see that it's a map that is different from any other map from Insurgency because it's a wide open map. So you're gonna see a lot of sniper action or, or even players using um, big time scopes and bipods. Smokes are your best friend in this map and using the flanks it's really really important also rely on the snipers from your team but beware of the snipers from the other team as well you're gonna find a lot of snipers on many different places so it takes a little bit of time for you to know this map i will definitely do a map breakdown further down the line but right now i just want to show you the feel and the setting of this map it's really nice really good looking it's a remake from a map uh, from insurgency one and uh, it says unforgiving as it is beautiful so beware the second new map is called revolt and it has a really dark but at the same time mysterious atmosphere it's really good looking it's definitely one of the maps that i know that i'm gonna love it's a highly detailed map so every everywhere you can think and look it's a place that you can possibly find a sniper so it's uh, again as unforgiving as it is beautiful it is really detailed so it makes it really complex um, again this is the type of game where you can easily get frustrated if you run around all the time you need to run around and capture the objectives but you really need to be careful uh, and especially if you play in a map such as this one where you have so many rooms and inside each room you have so many details like desks and benches and, uh, benches and crates and a lot of stuff that the enemies can easily take cover behind and even blend in with the environment that you really never know what's around the corner. So again those Molotov grenades and those flashbangs are definitely going to be really useful especially with this new map layout that they have presented us with. But it's definitely a really beautiful map and I'm pretty sure that you guys will enjoy it. You may recognize this map. This map is called Peak, but it's slightly different from uh, the Peak that you used to know. First of all, it's more green. There's more green around it. And we have more trees and the main um, flag has more cover in it. We have um, more boxes around, like this one. This one, we have this tunnel here, we have another box here, the inside is pretty much the same, but they did some ballast changes that definitely benefit the map as a whole. This is really welcoming and it shows that they care about the map and if they think that it's unbalanced, they change it up and make things right. Another big addition in this map is this top area here. You could only fit here one guy, more or less two guys. Now this, why, this area is open up right here which will um, give more value to this flank of the map and prob possibly extend the gameplay to this portion of the map which usually didn't really happen so it's definitely a nice addition it again shows the right attitude from the developers and on this bomb side as well there's no longer the house here you only have this wall and it's basically the same as it used to be and finally, you have four new game modes. The first one is called Infiltrate, which is basically capture the flag. The second one is Flashpoint, which consists of one capture point in the middle and each team has two weapon caches. You either capture the control point and destroy the two weapon caches or you keep fighting until you run out of waves. And then you have Occupy, which basically is king of the hill. You need to capture the enemy objectives and if you hold the objectives, you will not deplete your uh, reinforcement waves whereas the enemy will have a limited reinforcement wave unless they of course steal your capture point and finally we have the vendetta game mode every team has one team leader that you must protect at all costs if you lose your team leader you lose the game so I hope I covered everything with this new DLC slash update. Let me know if I forgot about something. Meanwhile, tell me if you're interested in getting more content from Insurgency. I sure love this game and I think it has great potential. And I definitely think it deserves my time and my money as well. Alright guys, I see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.
Okay, we've got friendlies on Bravo. It's being taken.